Hello. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Welcome everybody to today's discussion about polio, a disease that has been there for a very long time and we're still fighting to eradicate it. And today we want to talk about polio, but not just about polio, we want to talk with the people whose life got impacted by polio. And of course we got Bill, the co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And maybe, Solika, we can start with you. You were born with a family member who has polio. Maybe you can share your story with us. So my dad um, has polio and he had it in Somalia when he was really young. Some of the ways polio has affected my father's life because we can see it like his day-to-day -day life. When he's buying shoes, for example, he can't just you know walk into a foot store and buy shoes. But for my father, he has to get his shoes fitted. And sometimes when it's like snowing conditions or there's a lot of rain, it's hard for him to go outside for his walking stick. So, you know, me and you, we can enjoy our time in the snow. For my father, it's not something he can do. So, so yeah, these are just some ways polio has hindered my dad's experiences. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because there are so many points that most of us probably didn't think about before, what polio means for your father, but also for you. And Isabel, we have you here today with your mother. Probably some of the things that uh, Solika told us uh, <laughs> resonate with you. Maybe yes. there's something you want to add? I didn't really know much about polio when I was young. I've always really known the word. Uh, but didn't really understand it other than it meant that my mom was in pain. Through the years I've seen how her physical abilities have deteriorated. Mm. Uh, she went from only needed the crutches to needing a walker and yeah, in the future we, she would probably need a wheelchair, which is hard and scary and something that we as, well, as a family also need to yeah, take on. <laughs> can imagine that it's going to be very hard and you've got to be very strong to fight it. And Meyer, thank you for joining us today. I heard that you were the youngest polio patient in Denmark. Yes. And now you are the chairwoman of the Danish Polio Steering Group. So yes. you're fighting against polio. Yes. Um, I live in Denmark and it's a very rich country. But I have also been living in Burkina Faso for one year when I was 11 years old. And in Burkina Faso, I saw a lot of people, polio survivors, who didn't have the same opportunities that I have in Denmark. At that point, when I was 11 years old, I was thinking we have to do something. It's a need for vaccination, and it's very big, and also for a better healthcare system in all the world. I think that's a very important work you're doing there, and it's so important because, like you said, we sometimes seem to forget that there is this disease. Mm. I mean, I'm from Germany, and in Germany we don't talk much about polio, but mm. we should because it's not over yet. We mm. have to fight the last part. And Thomas, you are also from Germany. You have a father in Germany um, who was also impacted by polio. What I found very interesting yesterday, we talked a little bit, and you explained to me that you're a father too now. You have a child. And maybe you can explain to us What does the polio infection of your father make to your child? For her, so my father is now in a wheelchair, so he's getting weaker and weaker. Life is much more exhausting for him. It makes me a little bit sad because I never played soccer with my dad. We never questioned it, we never talked about polio. When I heard that there are like cases in New York or in London and Europe, Yes, this is something which I wasn't aware of because for me polio is something which is in the past and it's more or less gone and yeah, when I heard that there's like, okay, the last mile which have to be gone, so this is the reason why I make the decision and say, okay, it's cool to talk to these people and make people aware. Yeah, very important that we talk about it and that's something probably I already learned today and, and a person who knows that it's still there and Yeah, has a very special story that is Julius. So maybe you can share your story and maybe correct some of the misconceptions we have on polio. So I got polio when I was three and a half years old. I grew up playing with other kids, but then something happened. I contracted polio, which changed my life forever. Uh, I became paralyzed. I could only crawl. Polio is something that is rare. And in this discussion, you could see that 
uh, you are from Denmark, you are from Germany, but there's a lot of misconception here, uh, in the, especially in the Western world, that polio is the thing of the developing country, yes, which exactly. is not true. Mm -hmm. Until we get the vaccine on all children, we are not safe. And uh, the good thing is that we can er eradicate it if we all join forces and uh, get children vaccinated and do more, more awareness. Maybe this is a good point to ask you, but what makes you optimistic about achieving a polio-free world? In 1988, it had been reduced so much in the rich countries, and a lot of the kids who are getting paralyzed now are in the poor countries, which is, is as you said, a very difficult thing. But we've gone from hundreds of thousands being paralyzed every year to now just a few hundred. Uh, but as long as we have polio, then it can spread back. You know, so eradication is a pretty magical thing. And you know, I'm very excited at how close we are. Um, I got to meet the last girl in India mm. who was paralyzed. And you know, of course, it was a tragedy. And India looked like we wouldn't succeed. But then in 2011, we did succeed. So uh, we're making progress. But we need people to join in, you know, the governments, they contribute resources uh, to help with all of this. And the message about all getting vaccinated is, is really critical, uh, but we're close. Maybe we can sum it up and maybe I give the last words uh, to you, Bill, so you can maybe tell us how you feel after this discussion. Well, I'm very touched to hear how it's affected each of your lives. You know, sometimes when you work on things in health, it's easy to, you know, think, okay, millions of dollars we have to raise and all these campaigns. But, you know, when it comes back to the, how it affects people individually, it brings home, you know, that we should rededicate ourselves. Okay, that is very optimistic that we are close and that's a good message, I think, to take away and also a very important message that we have to work together. So um, I will take this message home and it's about the people at the end. So thank you very much for the new angle we got on polio today. Mm -hmm.